It's time! The ATM Podcast, our man Mark Watson, not with us live in studio today, because where are you, Watto? I'm at Coach Rifles Rugby Ground in Remuera, working for the Defence Force. The Defence Force have their own World Cup running alongside the Women's World Cup, eight countries in all. It's the first time that it's happening. Today, we've got the might of Tonga taking on the French. Tongan's a big, big team. On the uh, other side of the draw, later on this afternoon, we've got Great Britain taking on Australia, New Zealand taking on Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, a combined team. All right, then, let's talk about the Women's Rugby World Cup. NPC is dead. It is dead because the Phoenix had four times the crowd in Wellington than the Wellington Lions did. Bathurst, why don't you like motorsport? The Black Caps, why are we so timid and fraidy cat with the bat? Sky TV have the next two Rugby World Cups. We can cover the whole goddamn gamut. Apologise to me! But let's get it underway with the Women's World Cup. Kicking off it was on the weekend... Are you just absolutely enraptured with this? Have you jumped the hype train? Have you have, have you finally got with the fact that this is the explosive growth sport across the world like the mass media continually tell us that it is, Wano? I didn't watch it because I don't need to be told what to watch, Martin, and almost out of protest. I do not need to be told what I must be watching by um, the political left, by the sort of... Uh, identity politics which continues in this country and which our media have bought into um look firstly congratulations on the crowd they did get but let's not kid ourselves it was by no means a capacity eden park they've come out and said oh six thousand people didn't turn up no 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 there was about 10 or fifteen thousand people that weren't there so rather than trying to continue to sell us that's forty thousand and women's rugby is absolutely booming let's get rid of the politics out of it let's just celebrate the fact that 10 years ago no one would have turned up 10 years later twenty five thousand people have turned up i'm not sure you can say about the same about the crowds in whangarei uh, but it is only ten dollars to enter, five dollars for kids. So I mean, it, it's it's a bit of a bargain. Um, good product. I mean, what I do like about women's rugby is I don't. Uh, the nice that we're not having to constantly see scrums being reset. They tend to get on it, sort of almost a throwback to watching the All Blacks back in the 1970s and 80s. So there are some positive things in it. Um, but yeah, I just wish I, I just wish we'd stop politicising everything around it. Stop always having to make some sort of political statement all in the name of women's rights and equality. Let's just enjoy it for what it is. Let it just organically grow, Martin. Oh, look, 100%, I'm sitting here nodding with absolutely everything. I'll tell you what I like about it. I like the fact that the crowd that went really enjoyed themselves, had fun at Eden Park, and it's such a rare thing to say about any sports event. Look, I, look, I, I enjoyed the All-Whites versus Australia. I love my football, and I went there, and I enjoyed that, even though the game was put, the pitch was worse, and the All-Whites were terrible in that second half. But to go to a rugby game, any rugby game at Eden Park, and say that you had fun and enjoyed yourself, stuff all people come out of Eden Park after watching the All Blacks, and actually had fun. Most people are miserable, their arms are crossed, and they're moaning and bitching about something. So look, I applaud the fact that it was a different crowd. They they actually attracted a crowd that rugby, when I'm talking rugby, I'm talking men's rugby, is trying to get, which is families, which is kids, which is people who aren't diehards. So they've actually ticked a really good box there. Yeah, and look, they've priced it correctly they've priced it smartly let's just get people in let's get them there show them what a good time we can have and then hopefully that becomes a habit for them hopefully they do come back in the future with it you look um eden park i mean you know i think chris ratty once described it as a cemetery with chips um it's probably not too far wrong because that's probably one of the few times in rugby where we actually do see a decent crowd but just going back to the politicizing of it you know i enjoyed um watching highlights of the women's haka but the headlines the greatest haka ever performed it was just spine tingling no it wasn't no it wasn't it was good it was great good to see but it wasn't the greatest Harker ever performed and it wasn't spine tingling so let's just get rid of the narrative yeah i totally agree just stop the fluff and guff and stop ramming it down our necks that we are going to have to watch this and i agree let it organically grow the other things i like about the women's game watching it is i love the pace i love the athleticism it is not bogged down in injury breaks as you say scrum resets and all the macho posturing that you know men's rugby gets and and i'll even go back to the hucker and i've been savaged on twitter for saying this but look i don't i know that whatever the gesture of the 
throat slash is meant to be breathing life or air in the lung or whatever it's actually meant to be. For 99,999 people out of 100,000 in the world, that looks like a throat slash. And when it combines with an aggressive facial attitude and a, and a game which is macho and it's about big hits and everything else, to me it's just the completely wrong message that, and the All Blacks don't need to be sending that. And I just wish that somebody would say to Rico Ioane, dude, you know, you can you can, you you can embrace the haka and all and everything about it, but actually putting a gesture in like that, it's like you you know, it's not a gang war. You're not facing somebody that you're seriously going to hurt, maim, or kill on the other side. So I like the fact that the women have removed all of that out of the game, and it's just actually the game. And when you watch it in its purest form, when it's played well, it's actually a really good game to watch. Yeah, oh, look, absolutely, it is. As you say, there's not just the constant stop and play. You don't tend to. You know, I mean, the referees, we can talk about whether the two Australians should have been yellow carded or not, but you don't tend to get the higher tackles. Um, and yeah, look, and it is a good product. It's not played at nearly the same pace. No, it's um, not. But sometimes of course it's, it's not. nice to see a game just being slowed down. But really, really positive, Martin, because I wouldn't be me if threw this in. But nice to see Mount Abergrammer's finest and Portia Woodman out there on the wing scoring tries, doing what she does best. Arguably the greatest female player that's played the game up to this point. Apologise to me! Mark Watson is with us, ATM. That is the Apologise to Me podcast. NPC is dead. Four quarterfinals across the weekend. They got 5,400 people at the Breakers on Friday night. They didn't get that for the North Harbour Battle of the Bridge. They got 8,500 at the Phoenix on Sunday. The previous day, Wellington Lions in a quarterfinal knockout had less than 2,000. You add the 3,000 or less that went to the Ranfurly Shield. Wellington has lost their rugby is what it is, Mark. I mean, this is, you, you know, if you're sitting there at New Zealand Rugby Headquarters, how can you not be overly concerned about that? The fact that a soccer match now in Wellington quadruples your rugby crowd. New Zealand Rugby, are you awake and are you watching? And the answer to that is obviously no. They don't give us stuff about it. But this is the reality of where the NPC sits now in New Zealand sport. It's sad, but that's where it sits. Yeah, but it is sad. And you're right, are they concerned? No, they're not. No, they're not. They no, don't. No. Care. They don't care. So mate. what have we got left? We've got Super Rugby and we've got the All Blacks. And as I said to you previously, and then we wonder why we're suddenly lacking a little bit of depth or we don't have that sort of uh, steel quality amongst our players because I'm not sure that they've had to pay their dues at every level like they once did. Secondary school will eventually be straight into Super Rugby. And the reason why New Zealand rugby historically has been strong is because of the MPC. People are not going along, but part of the reason too is, Martin, because who are they going along to watch? The best players are not playing in it. They're all resting. They're all just having time off. The All Blacks are allowed to play in it. Um, you know, we've had this discussion that now that's starting to filter into Super Rugby as well. You, you go along and go, well, I haven't even actually heard of half of these guys. Where are the Barrett brothers? Uh, where are these fringe All Blacks? You know, it's been nice in recent times that Roger Tuivasa Sheik has been allowed to go and play for Auckland. But we've got to have our top players there for the entire season, Martin. Um, but also the other thing is, so I think rugby have been arrogant for so long and just assumed, oh, people will turn up. Yeah, we'll still yeah, rate well. It's totally, all about the totally television mate. deals. Yeah, but we have actually evolved, Martin. We're no longer a nation of rugby racing and beer, that old sort of school. We've actually evolved, you know, through Sky, through satellite television. We've been exposed to so many more sports now that kids have so many more choices. They're inspired. They can see pathways. You've got the collegiate system in the States offering scholarships. If you get into diving, if you get into water polo, uh, the can Concussion issue is still a big one. And with all those issues going on, you'd think, hey, we need to put greater emphasis. How do we rebuild the MPC? How do we get people along? And the reality is, you've only got so much time these days, Martin. As you talked about, our stadiums are woeful. Mm, our stadiums are absolutely watch, awful they are. around the country. They are. And sport, needs, sport just can't be about the sport now. It's actually got to be the whole game day experience. And the game day experience is awful. It's like when you go to Eden Park, Martin, and you know, you're know you thinking to yourself, well, I really don't want to have to buy a pie for $12 that if I drop, it's going to bounce back up because it's so rubbery because it's been in the microwave for so long. You know, So I might try and take a salad roll in, and then you've got people there strip searching you, and you're thinking, hang on, am I going through customs here in Singapore? And out the corner of your eye, in the background, they're building the gallows because you're going to get hung, drawn, and quartered because how dare you try and bring a bottle of water or a salad roll into Eden Park. You, you know, it's appalling. And, um, yeah, yeah, so you're 100% correct. Uh, MPC is in real trouble. And if MPC is in trouble, we know club rugby is in trouble, then I've got to say, New Zealand rugby is in trouble. And, and we might not feel the full effects of it right now, 
but we are starting to, and certainly in 10 years' time, we're going to be going, what's happened to New Zealand yeah, rugby? Totally agree, what man. happened to that totally second yeah. and third tier yeah. mm. level of the game in this country? Look, you know, it is, and it is succeeding and thriving in the smaller parts of the country where uh, they've kind of a- 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 ignored or, or basically decided to shunt sideways the the fish head administration in Wellington and I'm talking about if you're watching lower echelon rugby or if you go along to your local club you'll find that there's a few hundred people there and that's you know how it always used to be but the fact of the matter is is that the resources aren't there for this and when I'm looking at it Mark and I'm sitting there thinking okay you know women's rugby wants to succeed wants its place in the world wants a foothold here well let's just also put a perspective around it that the sport in New Zealand is failing that less people are watching it it's now a television event and that's all it actually is and so women's rugby is not just fighting to get a foothold in rugby. What it's doing is it's fighting an uphill battle against a sport which yep. its levels of interest are declining in this country. I look at my own children, mate, and you watch yours as they're growing up as well. I've got two boys who are obsessed with sport. They don't watch rugby. The only rugby game they've ever watched, I think they've gone, they went along to a super rugby game with me once and they left early because they were so bored. They watched the 2015 Rugby World Cup final. That's it. I've tried to indoctrinate them. I've tried to get them into it. They're just not into it. They just don't care about it. They care about first 15 rugby when their mates were playing. They might go and watch their mates play under 19 or 21s. But by the time they get to the stage where they've had two concussions in training, gone. They're out. And and, and look, and, 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 and I think that this is reflective of not just me and my family, you and your kids, but a hell of a lot of New Zealanders who just... They they aren't like us, mate. They haven't grown up with the sport in their blood. That's the truth. No, and I'll keep saying it because under the previous regime, under the regime from you know from when professional rugby really did kick in, or more really probably from about 2010 onwards, you know the Western rotation, all in the name of the All Blacks, didn't help it, and then that sort of became almost the demise. And then the Players Association holding the gun to the organisation's head. Okay, where do we find the money to play these players because they're all apparently going to head overseas if we don't? And that sort of almost has bankrupted the game to a degree. Martin, I mean you're a hardcore Wellington Lions fan. Did you fly down for the ticker tape parade they had when they won the Ranfurly Shield? Oh, that's right. Who holds the Ranfurly Shield? Mm, who is it? Who is it? Well, that's right. It's Wellington. The last defence on Saturday. And what happened? Nobody turned up to watch it. One of the great iconic trophies, and no one watched it. Meanwhile, they want to try and manufacture how big women's rugby is, which we all know, while it's growing, is still not ever going to succeed on its own commercially. And therefore, what they're selling us is actually a false economy. But look at Sky Television. I'll keep saying this. They're complicit in it. They don't do anything to create the discussion, to generate the hype. They're at the mercy of New Zealand rugby. They're a PR firm. Why would you buy shares in Sky, an organisation that has invested $450 million over five years on a product, as you've alluded to, that we all agree with in terms of participation numbers is in decline, television viewing is in decline, Numbers turning up to the ground is in decline, and yet that's your business model? I mean, you know, whoever thought taxis would one day become obsolete? Whoever thought movie theatres one day would become obsolete? Whoever thought Sky Television would one day become obsolete? Well, I tell you what, they're heading in that direction. Apologise to me! Apologise to me as the podcast. His name is Mark Watson and he joins us every Tuesday for a robust discussion about all kinds of sport. The Black Caps, is Finn Allen our opener now? Is that the end of Martin Guptill? He's been a fabulous servant, most T20 runs in the history of the game internationally and everything else. But what I'm watching this Bangla Wash series. There's another game tonight, mate. And I just can't believe how timid and fraidy cat our batsmen are. No one is a front foot player. Without Mitchell in the side, we don't have any guts. We don't have any go forward. We, do, you know, we just don't have anyone that actually looks as though they're taking it to the opposition at all. And as soon as we get behind the run rate, mate, everything is off the back foot. Kane Williamson seems unable to rotate a strike at the moment. I'm just absolutely pessimistic about our chances at the T20 World Cup, mate. I just, I just think that we mentally, the moment that we touch base, touch foot, foot down in Australia, we just turn into a puddle. Yeah, we're always in two minds, aren't we? We're never quite sure whether we should be on the front foot or the back foot, and I think that can be a metaphor. Or do we need to be measured in our approach, or do we need to be attacking? But look, I just put this down to the captaincy of Kane Williamson. I put this down to Gary Stead, the coach. I just think they're conservative by nature, and I think that just flows through. Then you get the swashbuckler of McCullum back in his day, who just said, hey boys, we just go out there, we play positively. Now, in T20 cricket, it's always a gamble, isn't it? Any time you make a, a, take a game and you shorten it up, it becomes more and more of a game of chance. But I'm with you. T20 cricket was designed 
designed to be attacking. It's designed to be aggressive. And over the last 18 months, over the last two years, New Zealand cricket, like New Zealand rugby, only more from a performance point of view, have been in serious decline. And until New Zealand cricket sit down, actually review what happened in the New Zealand summer last year with the loss to Bangladesh. Uh, the they won't. Test series they won't, mate. They won't, mate. They won't. Until they, they just, start doing mate, they don't, they, All they care about is their cash balance, mate. They're bound. That's all they care about. The books, we had an announcement overnight that, oh, uh, as no. far as the summer of cricket goes, Christmas and New Year, how many games are the Black Caps playing in New Zealand over that time? How many? Zero, Mark. No, We're going to Pakistan. We don't even get to see our national team. David White doesn't give us stuff as long as the bank balance looks good and he's ticking his KPI yeah. boxes. It's like Mark Robinson, mate. These people are not interested in the betterment of the sport. They're inter- interested in their own personal betterment in terms of what they earn, in terms of the next job that they're going to get. That's the reality of it. That's sports administration. You're on a gravy train, mate, and you're just waiting to get off at the next ladling spot. But Martin, you can go and watch the women's cricket team. They're the saviour, mate. Everyone apparently wants to... I'm surprised it hasn't sold out yet all the women's cricket. I'm sure the media will tell us that get your tickets quickly. It's going to be a sellout and it's on par with the men's game and we should all go and support it. But it's funny, isn't it? You look at cricket, you look at rugby... What are the two things they've both got really, really powerful players associations in the background? You keep it's harping on about, about this, mate. It's you keep it's... beating that drum and banging that drum. Mate, you should be a union man. You used to be a lefty. What's wrong with having a strong union? No, but it's all about the players, mate. This is all about the tail wagging the dog. Hey, I want to play for New Zealand, but you must let me go and play in the IPL. Even though I've been injured all year for New Zealand, I'll go and play in the IPL because I want to make my millions. You know, it, but, but that, it's exactly right. It's the same, it's 100% the same with the, the rugby side of it. It's all about me, 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 me. What can you give me? What do I get out of it? What do the players get out of it? Hey, I'd actually have a little bit more empathy and sympathy for it if there was actually some jeopardy around some of these agreements. But hey, we'll pay you. It doesn't matter whether we win or lose. You're our guy going forward. You know, I'm sick and tired of players holding a gun to our administrators' head saying, if you don't pay me, I'm going to become a gun for hire or I'm going to go and play professional rugby in the UK. I've said this before. If that silver fern doesn't mean that much to you, go. Okay. And if you just need a reminder of what it means to be a New Zealander, go to Gallipoli. Go and have a look What ultimate sacrifices because I'm over it. Okay, there's blood out of my eyeballs as I'm speaking to you. What I, this article by Alex Powell, I've decided that News Hub are the worst, mate. News Hub are essentially just a PR agency for the various sports that they're supposedly in partnership with. This guy, Alex Powell, has written the article, Dates Locked In for Black Caps, Two Tours of Pakistan Away for the Christmas Period. This is a paragraph that he writes. However, the Black Caps Indian Premier League commitments will likely see a weakened side for the second tour, as has been the case with the end of the New Zealand home summer for the last two seasons. That's not a quote from New Zealand cricket. That's a quote from a so-called journalist who now has just accepted the narrative and just writes it like it's gospel truth and it's fact. Hang on a second. Your job as a journalist is to sit there and go, what? Why are we sending a second string side? Why have you decided to choose the IPL over playing for your country? Put the handbrake on here. This isn't how this works. The only reason you're at the IPL is because you play for your country. If that's not the priority, then you don't play for your country. But this is what we've got now, mate. We have just got a sports media which is just sitting there, tongue up backside, absolutely sycophant. They just rewrite the press release. That there to me is the most classic example of somebody that is a journalist purporting to be a journalist. Just accepting, oh, no, this is it. So Black Caps light go over there now because what's more important is a provincial T20 competition in India. Come on, man. Your job is to call this stuff out, not to just sit there and rubber stamp it. Oh, we don't have journalists these days. We just simply have people who write up the press release. That's it. These just rewrite the press release, mate. Yep. And, then, and, and the young journalists, and then suddenly they're starstruck because they get a bit of a one-on-one with Kane Williamson or whoever it might be. It's like Talkback Radio, Mark. And I always remember, I always remember Murray Deeker saying to me, Mark, you cannot do this job if you get too close to anybody. And, and that's the best thing the best piece of advice I've got. So I make a point of never getting too close to anyone. Well, that's easy for you, isn't it, Mark? That's easy for you, what I not to get too close to people because nobody wants to, mate! No, but uh, I'll give you a great example. I used to go really, really hard on the America's Cup and then through Peter Lester, Peter said, hey, look, Mark, why don't you meet Grant Dalton? I think you and Grant would get on quite well. And then I took the opportunity. I sat down with Grant. Suddenly I've got that relationship with him and it's a lot harder then to suddenly critique Team New Zealand because you feel like you've established that relationship and then suddenly, you know, you well, you're sort of, maybe you're educated to a degree, but you suddenly feel like, hey, I'm in their pocket now, and it's very hard to then get back out. And you sort of feel like you've sold yourself out a little bit. And I think this is the problem. You know, how often do you see 
you know, I think Steve Hansen was a master at it, you know. He'd deliberately take out all the Herald journalists and different things. They'd have dinner with them. And he just had them in their pocket by the end of it. Oh, no come on, you want to be loved, Watto. You want to be loved, don't you? I don't you want, want to be cuddled and you. hugged and I loved? Only want to, I want to be loved by you, Martin, my wife and my two kids. Let's talk Bathurst to finish with. Why don't you like Bathurst? What have you got against motor racing? Who said I've got anything against motor racing? I sat down there and watched the last hour and a half. It's the best sport. It reminds me of the back nine of a golf tournament, um, the majors. It's where it all happens. I won't sit there throughout the day because I think the first three quarters of it is a bit meaningless. It really just happens in the last hour and a half with the uh, tyre changes and the fuel changes and the pit stops. Um, no, I, lo- I-, I love my motorsport. I don't, I'm don't. i not a big Formula One fan, though, Martin. I just find that all a bit too... I just don't like the idea that's not based on merit, that you can sort of buy a drive... Um, I find Formula One, there's not a lot of passing opportunities anymore. You tend to get that one car that's slightly quicker and they tend to just dominate the entire season. But no, look, look, I think motorsport, when you look at Earl Bamba, you look at what we're doing, um, you know, in Indy cars at the moment with Scotty McLaughlin, Scott Dixon, you see what Shane Van Gisbergen's doing. We've got drivers winning Le Mans. Rally cars. I don't think motorsport, yeah, I don't think motorsport, motorsport is in the best place it's ever been probably since the 1960s, 1970s. And a lot of it goes back to that New Zealand uh, driving academy, which develops a lot of these young guys. Um, but yeah, no, look, I, I, Shane Van Gisbergen should be in the Helberg discussion. 19 race wins this season, wins Bathurst, um, you know, how can you not have him in the discussion? Because I would imagine if the Women's Rugby World Cup team goes on and wins, we're really, there's only Great Britain, well, there's only really England and France outside of New Zealand that can win this tournament. The rest are, are pretty woeful. I'd imagine they're just going to walk in all over and pick up the Halberg Award, probably more on a box-ticking exercise. But then based on that, surely you've got to look at Shane Van Gisberg and he should be in that discussion. Devlin. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! The Platform.